on crossing the serene and historic Chalia River, which witnessed multitudes of events that shaped the history of the Kingdom of Calicut, we come across a soaring red chimney spurting smoke into the blue skies. On entering the lush green compound, one will be confused if they had time travelled into Europe during the times of the Industrial Revolution if it wasn't for the Nungi-clad workers. With huge white letters, it is written on its facade, Commonwealth Trust India Limited. Under German missionaries and the Savanum, Thorangi to Lother. World War Lord would be to Britain at Edutin Sershom. Enemy property at Britain, a Gavish Mandan Sershana, Commonwealth Trust Limited in Monitor Marnadu. Commonwealth Trust Limited in the Gail, British leaders or management or good eater, seventy seven, nineteen seventy seven, where either work either Tandatino. Nineteen seventy seven, the Indianization of Aga Itana. When Joseph Friedrich Josin Hans took over the position as the Chief Inspector of the Mission, a formal industrial commission was established in 1852 and the Basel Mission started to be involved in the industrial sector in full fledge. Why a Christian missionary organization should go into industrial entrepreneurship. That also in a planned and deliberate manner. The problems the missionaries faced during their active work here were tremendous. The reason was that this was a caste stratified society, which means that a person could only be taking up a profession defined by his caste. There was no movement across caste. Majority of the converts who, who, to Basel Mission were from Tia or Polia caste. Members from this caste got converted. They had no option to continue their traditional activities as landlords did not permit. Basel Medicine didn't straight away take up large-scale industrial activity. The idea was to settle the converts in some gainful occupation, whether it is traditional or modern. Eventually, after trial and error in many different lines, Basel Mission identified two lines. One was weaving, then the other was tile making. The industrial history of the Basel Mission in India can be divided into three phases. Early phase, which was from 1834 to 1852, categorized for its agricultural and industrial experiments. Middle phase, from 1852 to 1882, known for its establishment of tile factories, weaving units and printing units. And the final phase from 1882 to 1914 with its increased production in factories. Basel missionary George Plebst studied the process of clay treatment, glazing, construction of kiln, and baking process from Germany and experimented with it in a locally made kiln in Mangalore with the help of a local craftsman in 1864. The experiment paved way for the beginning of the industrial production of roof tiles in India and was also the event that kick-started the product which later came to be known as the Mangalore tiles. Popularity for Mangalore pattern tilers, one is the color, other one is the weight of the tile is comparatively less than tiles which is manufactured in other part of the country. And for the color, the grinding and optimum content of sand and water. 
for the Farooq region. This is the one of the best play available for the times. And very less quantity of water is used for the kind of manufacture. The first mission factory was established at Jepo in Mangalore in 1865 on the banks of the Netravati River. 360 tiles were produced in a day initially in this factory that worked on bullock power which employed two workers in its inception. Seven factories followed, which were all either on the coasts of rivers or locations connected using rail transportation. There was the local Shalia caste in Malabar. They were weaving tuwarth or a towel, which is used as a towel as well as a garment or mund. And very little dyeing was done. This Malabar is not a cotton producing area region, so yarn was brought from Coimbatore. In fact, requirement of cloth was somewhat limited as in those days, most of the population were not covering the upper part of their body. Basel Mission in its factories started producing very different products. For example, bed sheets, curtain cloth, suitings, shirtings, trouserings, and cloth for very special purposes and also hosiery products. Most of these products were exported. Actual weaving was done in by hand, but the uh, loom was very different from the uh, pit looms which Salia weavers used. Basel Mission introduced what is known as the frame loom, which had the capacity to bring these diverse products. Johannes Haller a master weaver studied the local pit looms and introduced the fly shuttle to the Indian context. It improved the productivity from 50 to 200 percent depending upon the cloth width. With the arrival of the British Indian government and other parties to the weaving industry, the mission faced tough competition by the early 20th century. The mission industries thus introduced the system of jacquard weaving to the Malabar coast. Hala is also credited for the invention of the khaki dye from the bark of the semi carpus tree. This is considered a pioneering work of the mission as khaki became a color of the police and the armed forces in India later on. In traditional Kerala buildings, we use only thatcher. And despite the fact that thatch roof is one is safety, and at any time the fire can happen, maintenance every year you have to do the maintenance part, and dust. So when Germans came to Kerala with the painted tiles that was made in 1834, so Kerala people accepted those tiles because of the safety safety concerns. And there was a heavy demand from British PWD and railways. And railways were made all across India. And for the railway station and for the quarters for the railway employees, tiles were in much demand. So supply was less and demand was more. The Ferrog Tile Factory was established in 1905 at a spot where the raw material, the clay, of feldspar was abundant. The Chalia River thus acted as a provider of raw material and as a trade route. The railway line, which was laid out by the British to Calicut and the construction of the Farooq Bridge that followed, increased the connectivity and trade to and from the factory. The Germans trained local craftsmen how to make bricks and how to make curls and uh, how to make arches. They exclusively use flat arches, segmental arches, semicircular arches. So this tradition is continued in local areas, India, Kerala. 
One example is BM school in Telcheri or BM school in Palaka. The site covers an area of eight acres and consists of two main manufacturing units, administrative units, service units, other ancillary buildings, clay pits, open loading bays and a mission bungalow. All the main factory buildings are made entirely using red bricks and wood and overlaid with clay roof tiles and are fully load-bearing masonry structures. The tapering wall thickness helps in supporting the load of the entire building. What is most striking for us in 2021 today, when we look at this building is that uh, it is built entirely without even a small quantity of cement or even a small quantity of uh, RCC or even a small quantity of steel. At all, whatever the steel that is used is only for some pipes and some machinery. Otherwise, the structure does not have even a single gram of steel in it. So, it is predominantly a fully load-bearing wall structure and all the tension members are predominantly uh, wood, timber. So a combination of terracotta and timber and sparing use of glass is what uh, is the most striking factor as far as the building is concerned. The floor plates of the factory are made using wood and have a conscious provision of slits in between which provides complete ventilation throughout the building. The trapping of heat from the furnace is thus reduced to a great extent. There's an inlet of light in every three meters of the building and washes the floors to a distance of six meters in the interior. Latrite is extremely used in Kerala up to 19th century. When Germans came to Kerala, they started manufacturing bricks. They wanted to prove that brick is superior to latrite. To prove this, Germans made bricks at the site. With that bricks, they made common type factory. ഫാക്ടറിയിൽ ആരച്ചമണ്ണ് ആയിട്ട് ആ ഓട് 
ഉണക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഉള്ള ഏരിയാണ് ഡ്രൈവിങ് ഏരിയ അവിടെ നിന്ന് ഒരു എട്ട് ദിവസം ആകുമ്പോഴേക്ക് സൂളക്ക് കൊടുക്കാനുള്ള പാകത്തിലാക്കിയതിന് ശേഷം അത് ഓട് തിരിച്ച് താഴേക്ക് ഇറങ്ങി അത് ചൂടേന്ന് ഇറക്കുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ചൂടേന്ന് അറച്ചതിന് ശേഷം ബേൺ ചെയ്തതിന് ശേഷമാണ് ഷോർട്ട് ചെയ്ത് വിൽപ്പനക്ക് റെഡി ആയിട്ട് പുറത്തേക്ക് വരുന്നത് Bricks laid in English bonds are bound using surki mortar. It is a combination of powdered terracotta and lime. The roofs are arranged in linear folded plate style. The valleys thus formed are properly drained out. The point loads which act at the valleys and the ridges are transferred using buttresses which are at a distance of 6 meters from each other. Segmental arches support the openings in between the buttresses on the ground floor. Arches are also seen as a load bearing member above some windows. In building construction industry, after tiles perhaps the new wonder material was uh, reinforced cement concrete. Be- people started to use RCC left right and center. irrespective of whether it is actually needed whether there is whether there are better alternatives we can very carefully use uh, rcc sparingly because rcc is a, is ultimately rcc is a heavily polluting an industry in that context is where a person like lorry baker became uh, most relevant he was talking about uh, the sparing use of rcc uh, uh sparing use of uh, masonry uh, or co- combination of rcc and masonry in such a way that the volume of cement used is very very little the volume of steel used is very little and you use uh, craft uh, one material or one innovation that lorry baker often used is the filler slab roof where he used the reject tiles that is third quality fourth quality tiles from a, a tile industry he kept two tiles together to form a an air gap air gap in between and uh, this tile became the filler material under the the neutral axis of a of a slab while reducing the self weight of the building it uh, also acted as an insulation tile factories being in locations where the raw materials were available forced the mission to acquire local labor the basel mission industries introduced a systematic time schedule in the work life of the local population ഞങ്ങള് ഇപ്പൊ ജോലി ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങിയിട്ട് ഏകദേശം ഓരോരുത്തരും ഇരുപത് വർഷത്തിന്റെ മേലെ ഇരുപത് വർഷമായിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നവരൊക്കെയാണ് ഇപ്പൊ ഉള്ളത് എന്തായാലും ഒരു വലിയൊരു മാറ്റമാണ് ഉണ്ടായത് ഈ വ്യവസായം ഇവിടെ വന്നോട് കൂടിയിട്ട് ഈ നാടിനെ തന്നെ മാറ്റിമറിച്ച ഒരു അവസ്ഥയാണ് ഒരു കൃത്യമായിട്ട് ഒരു സമയ കൃത്യതയ്ക്കുള്ളില് ഈ കമ്പനികളിലൊക്കെ ജോലി ചെയ്ത് കൃത്യമായ ഭക്ഷണങ്ങൾ രാവിലെ എട്ട് മണിക്ക് ജോലിക്ക് കയറി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പന്ത്രണ്ട് മണിയാകുമ്പോഴേക്ക് ഇവിടെ സൈറം മുഴങ്ങും അപ്പൊ എല്ലാവരും ജോലിയൊക്കെ നിർത്തി ഇതുപോലുള്ള ഭക്ഷണ സമയങ്ങളിൽ ഭക്ഷണമൊക്കെ കഴിച്ച് അതിന് ശേഷം ഒരു മണിക്കൂർ കൃത്യമായ ഒരു മണിക്കൂർ തന്നെ റെസ്റ്റ് കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞതിന് ശേഷം വൈകുന്നേരം അഞ്ച് മണിയാകുമ്പോൾ അതേപോലെ തന്നെ സൈറന്ന് മുഴങ്ങും അങ്ങനെയാണ് ആ ആ കൃത്യമായിട്ടുള്ള ആ സമയ കൃത്യതയ്ക്കുള്ളിൽ നമ്മൾ ജോലി കഴിഞ്ഞ് പോവുക The furnace built during the time of the Germans still burned for the entire 24 hours every day in the factory. ടൈൽ ഫാക്ടറിയിൽ മെയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ക്ലേ പ്രൊഡക്ട്സ് ആണ് പല ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ക്ലേ പ്രൊഡക്ട്സ് ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരുന്നു പണ്ട് മുതൽക്കെ അതിൽ ലിസ്റ്റിക ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരുന്നു മൂലയോട് പൂവോട് പൂവോട് ഫ്ലോറിംഗ് ടൈൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ആ ഫ്ലോറിംഗ് ടൈലൊക്കെ വളരെയധികം ഡിമാൻഡ് ഉള്ള സാധനങ്ങളായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ പിന്നീട് പിന്നീട് ഈ ഇതിനോട് ടാക്സൊക്കെ കൂടി പ്രോഫിറ്റബിലിറ്റി കുറയാൻ തുടങ്ങി വളരെയധികം മാർജിന് പോകാൻ തുടങ്ങിയപ്പോഴാണ് 
ഞാൻ അതിനനുസരിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള റോ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ലഭ്യത കുറഞ്ഞു അപ്പോൾ അതർ ഐറ്റംസ് ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നതിനേക്കാളും കുറേയും കൂടി പ്രോഫിറ്റബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഐറ്റം ആയിരുന്നു ടൈൽ ആ ടൈൽ മാത്രമായിട്ടാണ് മേജർ പോർഷൻ ടൈലിലേക്കാണ് പിന്നീട് മാറുന്നത് നമ്മൾ ഓളോ ബ്ലോക്ക് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു പ്രോഡക്റ്റ് ഇപ്പോൾ അടുത്ത കാലത്താണ് മാർക്കറ്റിൽ എല്ലാവരും ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങിയപ്പോൾ അത് നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ സമയത്ത് സീലിംഗ് ടൈൽ നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ജാളി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ഐറ്റംസ് ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നില്ലെങ്കിലും അതിൻ്റെ പ്രൊഡക്റ്റ് ഉണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ സംവിധാനങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ കയ്യിലുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഈ വക സാധനങ്ങൾക്കൊക്കെ ഡിമാൻഡുകളുണ്ട് പക്ഷേ അതിനനുസരിച്ച് ഉണ്ടാക്കാനുള്ള റോ മെറ്റീരിയൽ കിട്ടുന്നില്ല എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇപ്പോഴും അതിന് അതായത് നമുക്കത് ഒഴിവാക്കപ്പെടേണ്ട ഒരു വല്ലാത്തൊരു അവസ്ഥയിലേക്ക് എത്തിയത് അതാണ് മണ്ണിന് മണ്ണ് കിട്ടാത്ത ഒരു പ്രശ്നമുണ്ട് So even I was involved in uh, renovating a tile industry near uh, Trishur. The promoters of that industry was an artist. So what uh, they were making use of the same kins is to make uh, value added products out of terracotta. So you have uh, very, you know, very interesting jars out of terracotta. You have beautiful terracotta murals which are, you know, made into small, small tiles and then they stuck together or brought together. Uh, you have uh, terracotta pots and uh, sculpture pieces. So all these are value added products which uh, make use of the same terracotta, you know, manufacturing facility with like the kins and uh, all that. but uh, uses terracotta in much lower volume but uh, then whatever that is produced is a higher value and that brings in more money and the more uh, finances into uh, you know deprived uh, finance deprived such industries as terracotta that is one uh, way of uh, looking at uh, the next evolution of terracotta uh, industry another way is uh, hollow terracotta uh, blocks for masonry and hollow terracotta blocks also are used as hurdis in roof uh, forms a source of raw, raw material for clay industry is that uh, our dams are uh, silted now and uh, there is a, it's, a, it's a theoretical possibility and in some places it has actually started uh they have started actually making use of it and even in uh, in in uh, countries like germany also they have started desilting the dams and uh, while desilting the dam you get very excellent clay and uh, a good combination of clay and the sand which uh, if we are able to set up these kind of factories near the such dam uh, or reservoir locations or if there are possibilities of transporting it to nearby existing kins then the whole terracotta industry has a, another lease of life for that is something that uh, even in kerala's budget the earlier finance minister had kept a certain component for the uh, you know the the r&d that is involved in desilting the dams and making use of the soil for uh, making more value added products all these are uh, probable ways that you still can revive the whole terracotta industry the red brick building still stands tall in the lush green compound with its chimneys rising into the blue sky standing even taller is the legacy of this factory and the basel mission industries in southern india which standing the tests of time <laughs>